Hi, this is Jeff Blauet, Technical Agronomist with Cooperative Farmers Elevator. And on this week's Field Friday segment, uh, I kind of wanted to touch on uh, where this corn is, is going so rapidly now. Uh, we talked about that here real recently, but it's really changing fast, and I wanted to touch on a couple more things on it. Um, we're getting into that stage of the year now where if guys are on top of it, you're probably realizing that silage time is, is here and it's rapidly approaching and probably way past where we thought it'd be. Uh, we started to do some anal analysis on some of these whole plant moistures and they're quite a bit drier than we normally would expect. Um, and I think part of it is we just, we've been hot and dry and we just can't seem to break loose and get a good soaking rain and these, can't, these plants are really struggling right now. This corn right now has um, a lot of this corn is just kind of starting to dent. Uh, some of them have a milk line forming, but if the, the roots are in totally dry soil, which a lot of them are right now, uh, they struggle to take up enough moisture and nutrients to fill that kernel. So what's happening is these plants are very rapidly cannibalizing today. And so when that happens, they're sucking the moisture out of that plant and mobilizing it to those kernels, trying to fill that dry matter and, and things are going really fast. Um, I've got a couple of pictures here of the same hybrid within 40 feet of each other in the same row, but the soil variability is really showing up on some of these, and I wanted to show what that's doing to these kernels. So, uh, we have some pictures here of some corn that I grabbed out of a row. It's the same row, the same hybrid, and the soil type difference is what's really driving this, and we're starting to see this around the country as you drive around. Any subtle differences in soil type are in influencing how far along that corn is. But if you look at this first one here, uh, this corn plant, or this corn came off a plant that's really struggling. It's maybe half milk line. Uh, the, the drought has kind of sped that maturity along, and it's really mobilizing the nutrients out of that stalk, and you can really see the difference here. The next picture I have is a kernel that's probably a quarter milk line, and you can see it's, uh, it's just not quite as far along. That corn plant had some green left in it, hadn't totally cannibalized yet, but it wasn't completely green either. This last picture I have of an ear, this really has, you know, it's just dented. There's hardly a milk line forming yet. This plant's healthy and green and still has a, you know, a little bit of juice to, to feed that ear. You can kind of tell, looking down the row here, I've got you know, an example of that. You can see the, the brown at the front here, and as we go farther back, you can kind of see how much greener it is in the canopy, and that's the difference that we're seeing in a lot of these fields today uh, with how variable things are. I think we're going to have some real colorful soil, uh, soil type maps on our yield monitors because of this this year. Uh, moisture is also going to be there. These, these areas that are brown, that corn's probably going to be drier and it's not going to yield as well either with all the obvious reasons. So if we think about, you know, for silage you might say, historically we're looking at somewhere between that quarter and half milk line is where a lot of the silage, you know, tends to want to get chopped. Um, if we get into even three quarter milk line, a lot of times if you're into the dairy side of things, that's typically too dry a moisture. Um, the beef guys probably want it half to three-quarter milk line. They're not quite as, as wanting that, that wet a sl uh, silage, but this year what we're seeing is the moistures that we typically have at half milk line are in some of these fields is where it's just not even dented yet or just about starting to dent. So that's telling you how fast this crop is trying to get done and it's not good for yield typically when it goes fast, but that's what's happening today. Um, so what happens if we get a rain? If we get a nice rain, which isn't in the forecast, unfortunately, that's why I wanted to touch on it this week again. But if we got a rain, it would probably help that stuff continue to finish, maybe stay alive a little longer, but it depends on how far along it is. Some of this first stuff here, once those leaves start to turn brown and that maturity of that whole plant starts to show, it's too late. That stuff's not gonna green back up. What you're hoping is, to keep that farther in plant that's still green, keep that healthier and happier and let it fill green for a longer period of time. Uh, if we talk about, so what is the dry matter in those kernels at those stages? Uh, at, at dent, when it first starts to dent, you're probably looking at about 45% dry matter in that kernel. Uh, so a lot of moisture, is, there's not a lot of starch developed in it yet. As we get to half milk line, it's about 90% dry matter, so a lot more starch. That's why that milk line is a 
somewhat of a gauge on silage chopping and what we're getting for starch in that, you know, in that feed source. But this year, moisture may be a little drier than you like if you wanted to have a certain amount of starch in it. So you kind of got to make that decision. But my fear is in a year like this, that once guys get into the field, start chopping, which is just starting to happen today, uh, it's going to be drier than you think and we won't be able to keep up. It's gonna go rapidly really dry and gonna get way too dry with the forecast we have for dry weather and 90s in the, in the coming week. So we just need to be aware, don't, don't use the calendar to drive when you're chopping, get out in the fields. The other thing that's kind of notable this year is you drive along some of these fields, they look like the first three rows along the outside of the road look kind of green yet, but you get inside of that, sometimes it's a lot drier than you think. So we gotta do more than road scouting as well. So we kind of got to get out into our fields, check different hybrids. Some hybrids are going to handle this hot and dry weather here at the end better than others. So kind of be on top of that. The fact that silage shopping is getting here really fast and really early should also let you know that green, uh, with this rapid dry down, this green sucking these nutrients and moisture out of these stocks, these stocks are going to cannibalize. Harvest is going to be earlier too, especially on those stressed acres. Uh, that could cause some real standability issues and it could get here rather rapidly. So we talked about some potential black layer dates in a previous field Friday. Uh, be aware of that and be out in these fields because if we stay hot and dry, that could even speed up further with some of the stress that these acres are going to be under. So don't let it get ahead of you and don't assume that you're going to combine beans before corn. Some of that may need to be flipped on some of these fields especially if it's lighter soil or a hybrid that's really taking the stress hard. So be aware of that this year. Um, this is different than we've had for a few years. So let's, let's kind of be paying attention to what's going on. So with that, I just wanted to touch on that again. Uh, this corn is really changing really rapidly. If you drive around the countryside, you can see it. And I wanted to touch on that again so it doesn't get ahead of us and cause problems. So with that, that's this week's Field Friday segment, and we'll see you next week.